music group dead on time <laughs> it's good to see you all this morning all of you in church and any of you who are watching online this morning welcome to our morning service all heaven declares the glory of a risen lord well we're here we're thinking about the difference that the holy spirit makes to our lives when we let him that's the subject for our sermon this morning and a verse from that reading from Galatians 5 it's verse 25 since we live by the Spirit let us keep in step with the Spirit so let's just pray at the beginning of our service Lord you are great and above all things as we come to worship you this morning, guide our thoughts, our words, and our actions to be one with you and with each other. We ask this for Jesus' sake. Amen. Well, one or two notices before we begin our service proper. As always, it says there's lots going on, and that is right. Today, don't forget, we've got a picnic to go to, if you're able to, the whole church family, parish-wide picnic. Bring your own picnic, your own chairs, blankets. There are activities for all. And we're gathering at 12.30 on the green, up at Salisbury Road and Royal West Kent Avenue, outside St. Philip's Church. Do come and join us there if you're able. And then a notice about summer Sunday sessions. Um, please see Alison. I've not seen her at the moment. Where is she? She's at the back. Yeah. Um, if you're willing to help with the children and young people's groups here at St. Peter and St. Paul for just one week over five summer Sundays to give our regular team a well-earned rest, all materials for that will be given to you. But do think about that, young or old. I know Richard did it for a long time, so we'll see how we go. Um, now notice here, King's Birthday Soiree at St Andrew's Church on Saturday the 17th of June. 
Now, I didn't know whether that was the king or the kings or whoever, but it's at 5.30 to 7.30 on the 17th of June. It says, cheese, wine and music. Come and sing, play or recite. Saturday the 17th of June, 5.30 at St Andrew's Church. And then just to say with Holiday Club, Secret Agents, please see the newsletter for updates. Everyone is welcome to join to pray for Holiday Club this Tuesday, the 13th of June, between 7.45 and 8.45, upstairs here at Peter and Paul. And then I noticed that John's asked me to give perspective. The new edition is out. Um, do grab one from yourself if you don't get it delivered. But there are bundles for deliveries to the local area around our church. Do think about picking up one or two of those bundles and taking out and delivering them this week. That would be great. I'm sure John would be very well um, pleased about that. Well, those are my notices. And we've got a song. And it's the song, I Am a New Creation. So let's stand to sing that together. I Am a New Creation. time in the service where we need to say sorry for the things we've done. I've just seen Ben actually. Ben, do you want to come up and do the bands now? If you'd all like to sit. Thank you, David, eagle-eyed. Let me add my uh, welcome to David's. My name's Ben. Uh, I'm the Vic here. We just had some fun at St Andrews, so hopefully... Um, well, I'm not too late. And we're not going to say sorry for marriage. We're going to say thank you, God, for marriage. Then we're going to confess our sins in a moment. So we have some bands uh, of marriage uh, to call. Forceps. Uh, I published the bands of marriage between Joseph Edward Worley and Grace Olivia Buswell, both of this parish. I also published the bands of marriage between James Luke Edward Faulkner, 
and Kimberley Susan Hammett, both of this parish. I also published the bands of marriage between Robert Paul Thorpe and Kylie Marie Colaluca, both of this parish. I also published the bands of marriage between Dean Lata and Abigail Elizabeth Alcock, both of this parish. These are all for the first time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why they may not marry each other, you are to declare it now. Great news, we are gonna pray with thanksgiving. Father God, we ask you, Heavenly Father, to bless all of these couples. Grant them a deepening conviction of their love and commitment to each other. Fill them with joy on their wedding day. And please help them to serve each other in love faithfully all of their lives as you have served us in the Lord Jesus. Amen. Well, let's come now and say sorry for the things that we know are wrong in our lives and for which we know we need forgiveness. So our prayer is on the screen, so let's pray it together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And when we say sorry, we hear God's words of forgiveness. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, Alison, together time. Thank you. Good morning. Um, last half term, the children uh, in Sunday Club and the young people in SOS were thinking about uh, the character of God as we read in the Psalms and how we can express our emotions to God and he can cope and understand and love us with all the emotions that we have and how he is a safe place to go uh, when we are experiencing all sorts of feelings. Um, this half term we're thinking again about the character of God and the children are going to learn each week another sort of aspect of God's character. So we'd love them to know that you are praying for them and that you're supporting them. And do feel free to talk to them after the service about what they've learnt. Um, in my back today, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> I've never opened it upside down before. <laughs> Uh, so gra gradually does it, that would be sensible. Bit by bit, I shall reveal to you uh, a cake. Well, maybe, it's coming to the picnic. Uh, so I, um, I spent some time carefully making a cake. It's not brilliant, uh, let's, let's admit it's a little bit flat, but never mind, it's a cake. And uh, you know, I think if Josiah came and had some, it might taste okay, but I'm not gonna give him the opportunity right now. Sorry, Josiah. Um, so I've had a go at making a cake. I, I took some time over it, I put some love into it, uh, I made it for some friends, and um, you know, it, it's okay. I just thought, right, maybe I can repeat the experience right now. So, here we go, brought some ingredients with me. I think, let's see, what did I do last night? I put some sugar in. There we go, there's a bit of sugar. I put uh, flour. This one says plain flour. Never mind, I think flour is flour, isn't it? So I'll put some flour in. Great, and then, oh, let's see. Not much margarine left. We'll just stick without the margarine. And, oh, excellent, an egg, brilliant. <laughs> Great. So I remember we mixed it up together last night and 
and then I had to put it in the oven. So it needs a bit of heat, doesn't it, to make a cake? So um, let's put some heat in it. Ah, oh, great. Never play with matches. There we go. Well, Josiah, what do you fancy this? You think you're all right. You don't actually think my cake is worth eating. Charlotte, what do you reckon? Is that a little tasty shot? Yeah, oh, <laughs> Nikki Eclipse, great. Well, actually, frankly, we wouldn't want to actually eat this, would we? No. This cake has been carefully and lovingly made. This one hasn't. Today, Sunday Club and SOS are thinking about our Creator God. In the Bible, we learn that God has carefully designed and created the world that we live in. In the Bible, we learn that God has carefully designed and created us. And in the Bible, we have learned that God has created us, like him, to be creative with the ability to create things. Unlike us, God can create everything from nothing. We are not a mess. We are not a mistake. God has created us. SOS will be thinking about the implications of that, the faith that we have in a creator God. What does that mean for our lives? Sunday Club will be thinking about how we respond to our creator God. Do ask the children after the service what they've done and what they've learnt. Be really good. Um, let's pray before the children leave. Heavenly Father, thank you for the world you have made and for giving us life. Help the children and young people to think this through. Help their leaders and think that, about how to respond to you today as they learn the difference that this faith makes in our lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. We're going to sing two songs. The first one is thinking about Jesus being king of all creation. Feel free to join in the actions if you'd like to. Uh, and then there will be a song that we children and young people will leave in to let you carry on singing. Please stand, join in. Uh, who's the king of the jungle? <laughs> Who is the king of the sea? Ba 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 ba. Who is the king of the universe? And who's the king of me? I tell you, J E S U S. Yes, he's the king of me. Ba 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 ba. Who is the king of the universe? The jungle and the sea. Who is the king of the jungle? Who who? Who is the king of the sea? Ba 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 ba. Who's the king of the universe? And who's the king of me? I tell you, J-E-S-U-S. Yes, he is the king of me. Ba 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 ba. He's the king of the universe, the jungle and the sea. Well, we're carrying on with that theme of creation and we're going to sing together, O oh God, Beyond All Praising. Let's sing that together now. Beyond all praising, we 
says. And as Patricia comes to um, read our passage to us before uh, Ben comes to preach. The reading this morning is from Galatians chapter 5, starting at verse 16 to 26. You can find it in your pew Bibles on, on page 1172. So that's Galatians chapter 5, 16 to 26, page 1172. Life by the Spirit. So I say, live by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other, so that you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, Fits of rage, rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of heaven, of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to Christ. Thank you, Patricia. Oh, I wonder, did you watch last week's FA Cup final? One person did, Gabriel. Well, here we go, here we go. Patricia's in there. Took a while to get warmed up at St Andrews this morning. We did have some. What if I told you I was a Manchester City fan, that I love them? I've been following them for years, but I can't tell you the name of any of the players. I don't know the name of their stadium. I've never been to see them play. I, I could be a Manchester City fan. I, I say that I am. But when you press in, you don't see much fruit of that. The evidence is different from what you'd expect to see. Well, what about someone who calls themselves a Christian? What evidence would you expect to see in their life? The, the, the difference following Jesus has made in their life. If, if you are here this morning... As a Christian, if you are trusting in Jesus, his work on the cross to win your forgiveness, what evidence can you expect to see? The difference we can expect God to make to our lives. Is that even possible? Is change possible? Which is where we land this morning. Occasionally we break from our regular sermon series to look at different beliefs at the heart of the Christian faith. Well, this morning we land in Galatians. Uh, this is a letter written around 55 AD. Uh, it's the Apostle Paul's letter to Christians in Galatia. That's somewhere in modern Turkey. And this letter has a massive focus on God's spirit and the work of God's spirit in the lives of Christian believers, those trusting in Jesus. And that's the first heading uh, up on the screens. God transforms human hearts and lives. God transforms human hearts and lives. Everyone who trusts in Jesus receives God's spirit. But Paul tells us that in Romans chapter 8. And God's spirit in the lives of God's people changes us. God's spirit transforms human hearts and lives. He makes us more like Jesus. He enables us to make choices to live for Jesus and not just ourselves. Transformed from what we once were to what we now are. It's what we call more technically the doctrine of regeneration of the Holy Spirit. Paul's letter to Galatian Christians doesn't teach us everything the Bible has to say about that. But it's a good start. 
or in chapter 5, verses 16 to 26. Do have your Bibles open, they will help. Um, the, the slide headings may help you, they're mine. Um, better to have God's word in front of you. I'm going to pray, then we're going to look at these verses. Father God, thank you for your word to us, a light to our paths, a lamp to our feet. We do pray uh, of all morning, every morning, but of all mornings, this morning, your spirit would, would truly take that word, plant it deep in our hearts, and grow in us the fruit of faith. Amen. So we're in uh, verses 16 to 26. Cast your eye back briefly to verse 1. That sets the scene for this whole section. Why does any of this matter? Well, because the Christian life is freedom. Freedom in Christ. Jesus says in John 10:10, 10, 10, I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. That life is freedom. Galatians 5:1, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Freedom from what? Paul goes on, stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burned again by a yoke of slavery. Now we have more people at St Andrews uh, eat at Wagamama's than followed the football. Has anyone here ever eaten at Wagamama? Has any? Here we go. Good food, despite what I'm about to say, really good food. Uh, Wagamama is a Japanese noodle restaurant. They can't see me because actually I've Googled this and, I, and what I'm saying is true because we believe Google. Um, translated into English, Wagamama means self-indulgence or, or selfishness. It means me-centeredness. Great food, not sure about the name. Me-centeredness. Jesus died so we can be forgiven for our sin for our wanting to be gods of our lives instead of God, our me-centeredness, our wagamama. The world says me-centeredness is freedom, to live and be who I want to be, but the Bible actually calls it slavery to sin. We are slaves to our thoughts and our desires for life. Or we seek joy and peace and freedom following our desires. But don't we know deep down they never really satisfy? The money, the relationships, the achievement, they're never enough. They never stay long enough. They're never quite everything we hope they'll be. We think being a Christian takes the fun out of life, ties us to a load of rules. But the Bible teaches us the Christian life is one of freedom. Jesus died so we can be forgiven Freedom from being slaves to our sinful nature. Galatians 5.1, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Not to be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Free in Christ to live for Jesus, the one in whom life to the full, including eternal life, is found. Christians have received God's spirit. So verse 16, and we flick the page, Paul goes on, live by the Spirit, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. God's Spirit brings freedom to us, to, to live for Jesus, no longer slaves to our natural sinful desires, God transforms human hearts and lives. Yet it's not straightforward. God doesn't click his fingers and perfect us in a moment. The Bible promises one day, all those trusting in Jesus, when, when Jesus comes back, we will be glorified, we will be made perfect. But for now, we wait. And waiting is hard. And we wait as forgiven children of God. Yet we wait still as broken people living in a broken world. That's the second heading on the screens. The Christian life, it's a battle. Everyone who trusts in Jesus receives God's spirit and God's spirit in the lives of God's people changes us. God's spirit transforms human hearts and lives. He makes us more like Jesus. He enables us to make choices to live for Jesus, not just ourselves. And yet those natural desires of our hearts, they still live in our hearts. I used to play rugby for my school team. Occasionally, rugby games can have a bit of conflict at times. We had a big number eight. I was always thankful he was on our team when the conflict came. There is conflict in the Christian life. 
In fact, one preacher says, until we've understood the Christian life as a battle, I'm not sure we fully understood it. When we become a Christian, it is game on in our hearts. Two sides are battling inside every Christian heart. Our natural desires are ignoring God, are going our own way, are relying on ourselves. Those things, they still live in the Christian's heart. It's just that now we've got a new resident. God's spirit comes like a new housemate and he takes up residence in our hearts. Before, my heart was only concerned with my desires. Now there's someone else living there and he's got a very different set of desires for me. If you've ever shared a house, you will know there is a tension, there is a battle when different housemates want different things. And it's clear in verse 17, these two sets of desires, they're not complementary, but they are contrary to one another. Paul writes, the sinful nature, our, our wagamama, our natural me-centeredness desires what is contrary to the spirit, the Jesus-centeredness in my life and the spirit, what is contrary to the sinful nature. What I want in my life is naturally contradictory to what God's spirit wants to do in my life, in the lives of all God's people. There's now a new spirit wrestling inside my heart with my spirit. In Romans 7, Paul writes of the struggle of the Christian life, the battle in his heart between the desires of his spirit and the Holy Spirit at work in him. One wanting to please himself, the other wanting to please Jesus. Which is true in our experience of, as Christians. <clears throat> our lives can feel like a battleground. We're now bothered by things we think and say and do <coughs> that never bothered us before. When we weren't Christians, we weren't bothered by those things. And let me say now, if that's you, please be encouraged by the battle. And that may sound odd, especially when the battle makes us weary. But the fact that there is a battle is a sign God's spirit is there. And he is wrestling with your spirit to make you more like Jesus. It is a sign God's invaded our hearts and lives there by his spirit. My natural desire to please me to see the world how I want to see it, to see me how I want to see me, to see God how I want to see him, to set the rules and the boundaries for how I relate to God and how I relate to other people. That's not a good thing. I think it is. But, but it's much better I see the world through God's eyes rather than my own, because then I'll have a right sense of who I am, who God is, what the world is, what it means to relate to God and to others in the way God intended, in a way that brings glory to God and honour in my life. Which is what we were all, every one of us, created to do. And we're not left in Romans 7. Romans 8 speaks of living a new life by the Holy Spirit. It's similar to what we've got in Galatians 5. Change is possible. God's Spirit gives us the desire to live for Jesus, and he's the enabler for us to do that. God's Spirit regenerates our natural desires. He turns them out from ourselves onto Jesus. Sometimes it's bit by bit. Sometimes, like my life, it's really slowly. <laughs> but God's power at work in our hearts and lives is a far greater power than our own desires. The Christian life is a gloriously blessed life. We have a new life. We have a freedom to live for Jesus. We have a heavenly father. We have brothers and sisters in Christ. We have God's spirit to lead and comfort and equip and enable us to live for Jesus. Praise the Lord for all of those things. Yet the Christian life, while we wait for Jesus to come back, it's not easy. It is a battle to live against the natural me-centeredness, the wagamama of our hearts. It's a battle to live for Jesus, his values and priorities, in a society that so often cuts against that. But if as a Christian you are facing a battle to live for Jesus, be encouraged. His spirit is at work in you. And Philippians 1.6, his spirit will one day bring to completion 
the work he's begun in you. The Christian life is a battle. Our natural desires versus the Spirit's desire. Let me ask you a third question. Are you a list person? Are you a list person? I love lists. On my desk, I've got a day. We've got a few list people. Uh, I've got a daily list. I've got a weekly list. I've got a long-term list in the drawer by my desk. I use post-it notes for everything. Post-it notes even got a mention in our wedding sermon by somebody else. Paul goes on here to give two lists. There's a list in verses 19 to 21, things which come out of the natural, me-centered nature. And a list in verses 22 and 23 of things that come out of the Holy Spirit's work in our hearts and lives. There's a list of things to put off, and there's a list of things to put on. It's clothing language. It's a sort of put off. Put on. That's the language often of the New Testament. Evidences of a different nature at work in us. The first list, they're things contrary to God's spirit. In fact, there's a warning here. Verse 21. If left unchecked, they will keep us out of God's kingdom. And of course, we stumble and we fall on the journey. Christians are not perfect people. We're just forgiven sinners. But there is a big difference between stumbling and falling along the path to Jesus and being content to walk off in a different direction away from him. Again, if you are at all concerned about any of those things in verses 19 to 21 in your life, and I am sure for all of us there's at least something, then be encouraged that you're not content with that. And if you are trusting in Jesus, be encouraged it's a sign God's spirit is doing his work in you. Helping you see more clearly your brokenness and your need for his transforming power. We all need that. Verse 21 is a warning. Those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the verb is about a pattern and a habit of life. It's not about isolated incidents where we stumble and fall. There is a big difference between stumbling and falling along the path to Jesus and being content to walk off in a different path. That list isn't exhaustive. Some of those things in verses 19 to 21, well, they're they're obviously contrary to God's desire for our lives. Sexual sin, idolatry, putting other things first, things in our lives before God, uh, drunkenness, anger. There are some things which may surprise us. Discord, selfish ambition, Dissensions and factions. Let's pause there just for a moment. Discord, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions. Let's be those who seek unity in Christ over division. In our homes, and our families, in our church, in our church family, in the workplace, in school. Let's not sow seeds of discord. Little things we say that can make someone suspicious of another. A a little stirring up to pursue our own ambitions and agendas. Jesus refers to things that work against his work as yeast. And and Paul tells us just back on the page, Galatians 5.9, a little yeast works through and infects the whole batch of dough. If our hearts are feeling out of place with another, Jesus tells us the answer. Don't be for discord be for peace. And Matthew chapter 18, don't gossip about a person, go to the person you feel prickly against. Go seeking peace and pray for them. When I first worked for a church, the senior minister would say to the whole staff team, pray for those who've upset you because it's really hard to feel prickly about someone when you're praying for them. And that was so true. Let's use our words to build one another up. And in the context of church, to build this church family across the parish up. When God's spirit is at work in us, it is evident in the fruit of his spirit. Not the fruit of our natural, me-centered hearts. And that takes us to Paul's second list. The fruit of God's spirit at work in our hearts and lives. The things which come out of God's spirit transforming our hearts and lives. Now, only God knows what goes on inside every human heart. 
But over the years, I have found the fruit of God's spirit in these verses, that the best reference point to look for evidence of God at work in hearts and lives. Love, joy, peace, patience. Patience is one of my shortcomings. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Living for ourselves does not produce those things in our lives. Trying to live to please God by keeping the law and being good does not produce those things in our lives. God's spirit at work in us, transforming our hearts and lives, produces those things in us, makes us more like Jesus. Because let's face it, that, that fruit's a great description of Jesus in all his perfection. And again, none of us are perfect. We all stumble and fall. But Paul tells us to expect these things as fruit in our lives, if God's Spirit's at work in us. Paul says the fruit of the Spirit is, not it might be, the fruit of the Spirit is, dot, dot, dot. Paul calls them fruit. John Stott describes them as graces. Let me quote him. Which seem to portray a Christian's attitude to God, to other people, and to him or herself. They are the natural produce that appears in the lives of spirit-led Christians. Contrary to the natural fruit of our own desires, in verses 19 to 21. So we end with this call, to live as the people we now are. Trusting in Jesus, God's spirit transforms hearts and lives. It is a battle, but this is who we now are. So we're called to live in light of that, to live as the people we now are. It's the final heading on the screens. It's a brief conclusion, much less shorter than the second point. It is a call to keep in step with the Spirit. It's not a call to pull our socks up and get on with things ourselves. God never leaves us to do that. God tells us in his word, the Bible, what it means to live faithfully as his people. But then he enables us to do it by giving us his Spirit, his power at work in us. Put off put on. Verse 24, put off, it's stronger than that though, it's crucify the sinful nature with its passions and desires. The, the language is active, it's something we do, the part we play in living faithfully for Jesus, that, that we put off our sinful nature, that the wagamama, the me-centeredness that comes naturally to us all. And verse 25, put on, put on, or keep in step with the Spirit. Be led by the Spirit. The images of sheep led by a shepherd. Or a sailboat led by the wind. Two parts to the call God makes of his people. Live differently, verse 24. Be led differently, verse 25. Putting off, putting on, rejecting the natural desires of our hearts. Paul's first list. Embracing the Holy Spirit as he asserts his power over us. Things in Paul's second list. God will do it. But we're active participants too. Purposefully pursuing the way of righteousness that God puts down in every part of our lives. Deliberately walking down the path God lays for us. God's word and God's spirit doing their work in, on, for us. Rejecting one path, turning and following another. That's the Christian life of repentance and faith. Keep in step with the Spirit. Go with the Spirit each time that battle faces our lives. Tough as that may feel. So I'm going to ask where that will begin today for each of us. In the nitty gritty of life. With what? With who? In what way? at home, at church, at work, to, to keep in step with the Spirit. Because that's the truly free life. That's the life of fullest joy and contentment. Because that's the life lived as God wants, in step with his Spirit. Which begins, as stop notes again, with a daily discipline of prayer and meditation on God's Word. Allowing God's Word and God's Spirit to do their work of transforming us more into the likeness of Jesus. It is an exciting prospect to live in that place. God wants to do a beautiful work in us. He wants to produce a sweet fruit, 
like this nectarine in our lives, not a lemon that makes us sour. It's a beautiful life. So as we finish now, I'm going to close with John Newton, writer of Amazing Grace. But he was also a slave trader. He was a heavy drinker. He was a man who used to sleep with whichever female slave took his fancy. Then one day, having become a Christian, John Newton wrote these words. I am not what I want to be. I am not what I should be. I am not what I one day will be in heaven. But thank God I am not what I once was. God wants to do a beautiful work in us. He wants to produce a sweet fruit in our lives. It is exciting. The Christian life is exciting. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for your words to us. We are sorry when we drift into life that's not honouring to you. If we're not yet trusting in Jesus here this morning, please help us see that the transforming power he offers and turn to him. For those here who are trusting in Jesus, help us keep in step with the Spirit. Keep us dependent, keep us humble. Encourage us as we see change and transformation in our lives, even if just in little ways. And by your grace, would you show us that? And keep us pressing on until the day we are fully transformed when Jesus returns. We pray all these things for our good and for the glory of your name. Amen. Well, thank you, Ben. We are going to sing Amazing Grace a bit later on in our service, but now there's a song that might not be so familiar to you. It's a song called Holy Spirit, Living Breath of God. It's a song we sung two weeks ago. It's got a tune that's quite easy to learn, so let's stand to sing together. stand let's think about the God who we worship Father Son and Holy Spirit as we 
say the words of the Apostles' Creed together. So we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of a Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, please sit. We've got a, an extra bit in our service this morning as we come to commission the PCC. And I've got a few words to read out before we do that. Every act of service in the local church is a blessing. We thank so many who are doing so much to promote the mission of God's work in this parish, living Jesus, loving Tunbridge. We want to acknowledge this morning the PCC, the Parochial Church Council, and those who serve on it. A new PCC was elected at our annual church meeting on the 14th of May. I wonder if those of you who are on the PCC would stand now. Do have a look around and see who they are. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not upon your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. The PCC has a responsibility along with the incumbent to promote the mission of God in its parish, in this parish. We all need God's wisdom and discernment. We all need to hear God's words and his voice clearly, no less our PCC and incumbent. And so with this in mind, we want to thank God for them and their service to this parish and pray for them, commissioning them for this role. Let's join together with the prayer of commissioning, which will be on the screen. And so we all say together, Almighty God, you have given us your Holy Spirit to the Church to lead us into all truth. Bless with your Spirit, grace and guidance the members of this PCC. Keep them steadfast in faith and united in love that they may manifest your glory as we together prepare the way for your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, the Son, our Lord. Amen. God of mission, we are your church, Christ's body on earth. For your holy people and for your needy world, in all our thinking, give us wisdom. In all our planning, give us faith to move mountains. In all our actions, give us the power of your spirit that all we do and think and say may be for your glory and the growth of the kingdom of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, Sally is going to come and lead us in prayer. Perhaps I should say that David used the word then, but he's also on the PCC, but he was already standing up, so we were praying for him as well. 
So let's join together in prayer, wherever we are, whether here in the church or in fellowship remotely. Let's pray. And as today we celebrate St Barnabas, the great encourager, we pray this prayer. Bountiful God, giver of all gifts, who poured your spirit upon your servant Barnabas and gave him grace to encourage others, help us by his example to be generous in our judgments and unselfish in our service through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, we see so much suffering and injustice in the world. May your Holy Spirit turn round vengeful hearts and instill in all a sense of care and responsibility towards all people of whatever race or creed and towards the environment. Please answer prayer for those suffering from drought in Ethiopia, poverty and oppression in Afghanistan, the devastation following the dam burst in southern Ukraine, and all those places that are no longer hitting the headlines, but in need of relief from war and natural disasters. Heavenly Father, we pray too for King Charles and the government in this country with the challenges and divisions which they face, issues of immigration, the cost of living, and industrial disputes are all creating disharmony. Give those in authority not only wisdom, but tolerance and understanding. We pray for your worldwide church, for strength in times of weakness and persecution, and for a true renewal of vision to proclaim the good news of the kingdom. Bless and guide our church leaders, both national and local, during these challenging times. May they be guided by your truth with the help of the Holy Spirit. In this parish, we pray for today's parish-wide picnic, for the continuing preparations for Holiday Club, and for all the groups meeting during this week. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit to all who are ill, anxious, or struggling in any way. May they and those caring for them know your peace and comfort at this time. May those who have been bereaved be comforted by the assurance that in life and death we are surrounded by your love. A moment's quiet now to lift all those on our hearts to you. and a prayer for ourselves. Heavenly Father, grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. So let's join all our prayers together, those said and those unsaid, in the words of the Lord's Prayer, and the words will be on the screen. So let's say together, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Well, as we come to the, towards the end of our service, um, we will sing Amazing Grace together. Just to say, we don't um, pass a collection plate around anymore, but as if you would like to give, there is a plate at the back and a card reader, if you'd like to make use of those. Let's stand to sing Amazing Grace. Yeah. 
As we stand, I wonder if we could say the grace to each other. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And we hear God's words of blessing to us. Let us remain in Christ Jesus and obey his commands to bear much fruit and to love one another. And so may the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with us always. Amen. Amen.